Okay, so Oraco have recently sent me this NVMe enclosure to be able to use with my Raspberry Pi 4, but it also come in handy writing an operating system for the Orange Pi 5. Unfortunately, it hasn't arrived yet, so my Xbox case is still an empty shell. But uh, what I thought I'd do is have a look and see how much power NVMe uses, because it's obviously the faster storage. Uh, but I thought I'd compare it to an SSD drive, SD card, and also a USB stick, and see which one uses the most power. So I'm going to play the same video on each of the devices, and let's see how many watts it's using. Now, whilst it's playing that video, if I open up the Hot UK Deals webpage, which has got a lot of photos on it, let's see what wattage it goes up to. So I've just clicked on the page, and it goes up to, what have we got, 5.4, 5.7 watts. I guess that's going to be as high as it gets. Yeah, so we'll use that as a test. So 5.7 watts for the NVMe drive. Now let's plug in a USB stick and copy a large file over from that. So I'm going to plug it into USB 2, and that's because if you plug in two USB 3 drives, it often seems to take too much power and crash the system, but I'll try that in a minute anyway. So I can see it's gone up to uh, 5.4 but it's obviously not doing anything at the moment, it's just got the drive plugged in. So let's see what happens. But yeah, 5.4 when I plugged it in. Now I'm gonna start copying a 1.8 gigabyte file to the desktop, and because that'll be using both drives at the same time, and let's see what happens. So I'm hitting paste now. So it goes up, 4.2, 5.4, 4.8. That's weird, it doesn't seem to be going any higher than that. So 5.4, which is less than the YouTube test, and the YouTube video is still playing. Ah, it's gone up to six now that I've clicked on YouTube. So we've managed to get it up to six by clicking back on the video, but that's still pretty good. And I'm gonna unplug this drive, and I'm gonna plug it into the USB 3 socket and see what happens, see if it crashes my system. So what have we got? 4.8, 5.1, uh, the YouTube video is still playing. 6.0, so it doesn't seem to be using any more power, which is interesting, because I definitely have found uh, doing this tends to crash a system. So let's go back in and copy a different PS2 game to the desktop, and hit paste, and see what it goes up to, 5.1, 4.8, 4.5, it's not going any higher, which is weird. That's actually using less power and actually the system hasn't crashed. So if I go back to YouTube, 6.3 I'm getting there. Uh, so that's the highest I've got so far. So USB 3 is using a little bit more power, but it's not actually crashed this operating system. So let's close this down and go straight to an SD card. Okay, so that's playing that video. And if we have a look, 3.3, 3.9, nice and low. And I'm going to click on the Hot UK Deals. Oh, it's dropped really low now. I'm going to click on the Hot UK Deals page now. So what does that take it up to? 3.9, 4.2, 4.8. Oh, that's higher than I expected it to go to, but still pretty reasonable. Okay, so I plug my USB drive into USB 2, and you can see that we're on 3.3, 3.6, 3.9. And if we copy this file to the desktop and paste, and we've got 3.9, 4.2, yeah, 4.2 is the highest. And 4.5, when we go back to YouTube, while it's still copying that file. So on USB 3, the highest I can achieve is 4.5. So I'll do the same test on these two drives. I won't show them, I'll just share the results. Okay, so before I show the results of the four tests that I've done, uh, I'm gonna unplug my power adapter. So I was using this test on an official Raspberry Pi power adapter. And I actually use, well, this is the official USB-C Raspberry Pi power adapter. I use a USB-C coupler, and then I use this cable which shows the watts. Uh, now, if I put a USB-A to C adapter on here, I can now plug it into my solar power bank. So this power bank uh, will actually charge itself from the sun, not very fast, uh, but it was a very cheap one from Amazon, and it is really, really good. So let's plug this in and you'll see my Pi starts up. And this is one of the reasons that you really might wanna save uh, a watt or two, because if you're running from a power bank, uh, it could mean that it's you know making a difference of a few hours. So that's started up now, and uh, if I move my camera over, you can see that it's using what, 2.7 watts. 
So I've picked the SD card because that is the most efficient one. So in the test, when I ran YouTube and then launched the Hot UK Deals page, uh, it was 4.8 watts. When I was copying files from USB 2 to the desktop and running YouTube at the same time, that was 4.5 watts. And when I was running USB 3 and YouTube at the same time, that was also 4.5 watts on SD card. So super efficient and the best of the results. The Samsung bar came in next at 5.4 watts when it was running YouTube and Hot UK Deals. Uh, USB 2 and YouTube was 4.8 watts and then it went right up to 6 watts with USB 3. The next most power hungry was the NVMe drive uh, which I was surprised at because I thought it was going to be the worst because it's overwhelmingly much faster than the rest of them. 5.7 watts on the first rating then USB 2 was 5.4 watts and then 6.3 watts on USB 3 but the worst of all of them definitely was the SSD with the SATA drive, which I, I wasn't expecting because this is what I generally use. And probably the reason I get crashing is because I'll use this and then I'll plug in another SSD drive with SATA because I've got so many of them and uh, it will often fail. So I would be better off with NVMe as my main operating system because the SSD was 5.7 watts on the first test, then it rose to 6.6 .6 watts with USB 2 and then worst of all 7.5 watts on USB 3. So that's a whole three watts more than the SD card. So if you're running battery power, that's gonna make really quite a difference. Your battery is gonna last much better with an SD card. But if you want durability, then you're gonna stick with an NVMe drive or an SSD drive because they are the best. But I was quite surprised at how, how well the Samsung bar did compared to the SSD drive because they're both using USB 3 and I figured they'd be pretty similar. But yeah, these are pretty efficient. And another thing this power bank does is if you double tap, we have a very bright light. So I'm gonna switch back to mains power now and I'm gonna do a speed test on this to see how fast it is. Okay, so let's run diagnostics, which comes built into Raspberry Pi OS. And it's the one I always use, and I always do three tests and take the best test. So let's hit start on that. Okay, so show log. So let's copy that, paste it into a new document, and run it two more times. And the third test, I'm gonna go with the fastest with the random write and random read. So five, six, five, nine, five, six, right. So that's the fastest of that, fast of the, and the fastest of the read speed as well. Yeah, so I'm going to go with that result in the middle. And when we look at these speeds, uh, this is designed to test SD cards, and you can see that 10,000 is a pass. This is 162,000. Uh, random write speed, 500 is a pass. This is 5,994. And random read speed, 1,500 is a pass, and we've got 5,454. And let's see where that comes with some of my other tests. So if we go to my channel, and in the little search bar down the bottom here, let's type in, just put in speed, that will probably be enough. So let's go with these, which are my fastest SSD drives. Okay, so interesting results. So it's not as fast as my SSD drives uh, in this caddy. Uh, now I'm gonna be using this caddy just to copy the operating system over. I wasn't really having it for running an operating system from, but uh, I did think it'd be faster than that, but it's beaten by these on both of those tests. Now let's have a look at one of my M.2 drives. So I'm gonna try putting M.2 in here. Yeah, so the Argon 1 adapter, which is very good. Yeah, much faster speeds on the Argon 1 uh, with an M.2 drive. So 281,000 compared to 162,000 and much faster random write and random read speeds. So it's good for writing an operating system to an NVMe drive, but I wouldn't necessarily run an operating system from it. Well. I mean, it, it will run absolutely fine because it's still fast speeds, but you can get faster speeds from uh, a SATA adapter. Now I'm wondering if the USB-A to C adapter that I've got in here is slowing this down. I'm just gonna try it with a few other cables just to see if I can get better results and also the Argon 1 M.2 adapter as well. Okay, so I've been through a load of cables and I don't really have any fast USB-A to C cables, I would say. I've got lots of fast USB-C to C cables and I've got this 40 gig one which is really, really fast. But I think the bottleneck is this adapter. So I'm gonna to have to test this on my Mac. But I'll show you the results. Well, actually I can zoom in on this. Uh, so 
I've got a red USB A to C cable that came out with some really slow results actually got worse and even the 40 gig cable with the A to C adapter was also slow but again this is my only A to C adapter I've got so I'm going to go USB C directly into my Mac with this 40 gig cable. I used Amorphous Dismark on my Mac with the 40 gig USB cable and uh, I got slightly better results but still not amazing results especially when you compare it to these results so you can see these results are way way faster and that was done on the Oroco dock this is the 40 gigabit per second really high-end dock and it is an amazing piece of kit so yeah it's not the fastest enclosure but there's one thing I really like about it and I will definitely use it and it's for how simple it is to take apart so this is the uh, the big dock from Oroco and so if I'm going to be writing images for the orange pie onto this drive uh, it's not going to be ideal to have to take this out every time obviously that's not what it's meant for so I can take that out I use an adapter because this is only a 30 uh, size NVMe drive a little tiny one but with this enclosure you can just pop it in and it just has a little rubber bit that you push in and that locks it into place and that's all you need to do now you can use this as a heat sink and you can use it with it comes with a thermal pad but because I'll be swapping it out quite often I won't be using that I'll leave the heat sink in there because I'm sure that'll make a little bit of difference but then this just pops on top and then this bit other way around pops on here and clips and that's it so no screws or anything like that it just goes in and out very very nicely okay so i hope all this helps thanks very much for watching please like and subscribe